Welcome back. Quest means business. From the Saturn V moon rocket to the space shuttle, and now the next generation Starliner. Boeing has played a major role in escaping the Earth's gravity. And the Trump administration's intent to explore space continues and to guard it and will play a huge future and a huge part in this company's future. I'll discuss this with Mr. Mullenberg in just a moment. For instance, today, the US Vice President Mike Pence unveiled more details of the Trump administration's ambitions in space, including a US space force. President Trump's highest priority is the safety and security of the American people. And while too often previous administrations all but neglected the growing security threats emerging in space, President Trump stated clearly and forcefully that space is, in his words, a war-fighting domain just like land and air and sea. You came from the defense side of Boeing. What do you make of the idea of a space force which could hugely benefit Boeing's, not hugely, could, will, it will hugely benefit Boeing's space division and defense division? Well, we applaud the administration's investment in the, in the space force and more broadly in space as an enterprise the ecosystem of space. And so we're seeing more energy, more investment going into the space program today than since the days of Apollo. And that ranges from the, the Space Force to low Earth orbit exploration, new products like the Starliner, to deep space exploration, where we're going to go back to the moon and to Mars. But uh, let's, let's be blunt here. The company's going to benefit. You'll make money on this policy. Space is an important business for us. It always has been. You know, Boeing has been in the space business right. since it was invented. It's an important part of our portfolio, ranging from satellites to spacecraft to launch. You versus Musk. Who will be the first to Mars? You have said it'll be a Boeing booster rocket, or a Boeing rocket is the first to Mars. Do you stand by that? I do. We're working on that you rocket sure? today with NASA. This is the Space Launch System. You're sure? I'm yeah, shaking yeah. on it, I'm sure. I'm confident in our team and confident... I should have, I should have asked for a plane. <laughs> I'm confident in our partnership with NASA, and, and we're working on that first space launch system rocket today. We're building it. It's about 38 stories tall, more than 9 million pounds of thrust. And put that in terms of cars, that's the equivalent of about 207,000 Corvette engines. We're going to go back to the moon, and then we're going to go to Mars. And I firmly believe the first person that steps on Mars will get there on that rocket, and we're doing it jointly with NASA. Let's talk about planes. Mm -hmm. You make lots of them. What's gone wrong with the 737 production facility at Renton? You're making the planes faster than you can finish them and deliver them, and you're now literally parking them anywhere and everywhere. Yeah, what you see there is part of the challenge of growing the 737 line. You know, that line has uh, gone to 47 aircraft a month. Uh, now we've gone to 52 a month. We're just making that transition. Next year, we're going to go to 57 a month. What this shows you is the incredible global demand for aircraft. This is our fastest running production line. There are always challenges with these production rate changes. We've done 20 of these rate changes since 2010. Part of this is bringing our supply chain along, and we've had some supply chain challenges. We're dealing with that right now. Uh, we're going to deliver uh, per our guidance on airplane deliveries for the full year. But we're having some local challenges right now as we work through supply chain. So, it's not, so this is not something that's systemic and long running? It's not systemic nor long running, but this is not atypical of these rate uh, production rate changes and, and how we implement them. And we, we'll work through this, and we've got a lot of work to do, no question, but our team is marching through that smartly. Uh, the great news is, you know, we're moving to 52 a month and then to 57 a month. This is an incredible Are you pushing the system too far and too fast? The one thing I know yeah. from having covered this industry is that ramp up is extremely difficult. Yeah. 380 had enormous problems and cost them a fortune. Your 787 brilliant plane cost you a fortune on ramp up. Same with 777, not as bad. And now with uh, 73 Max. Um, what, what is it about ramp up? Well, airplanes are challenging. These are the most technically sophisticated machines in the world. And the production systems behind them, as you can see here, are very sophisticated. We have amazing people with amazing technical depth that know how to do this work. But it is very unique and arguably the, the most challenging work in the world. Now, as we ramp up, our key is to maintain production rate discipline. We don't want to ramp up too fast, nor do we want to ramp up too slow. We are in a growing marketplace. And so we try to hit a production rate ramp 
that meets that marketplace need while managing the risk of the enterprise. You're in a fierce battle, order for order, with Airbus. Yeah. Um, when it comes to Airbus, you've been litigating before the WTO for almost longer than you and I have been in the business. Is it time to say enough? Well, I think what you saw just recently, uh, earlier this year, is the WTO ruling that said Airbus had received about $22 billion of illegal subsidies uh, over the last couple of decades. Those need to be remedied. It's important to us, again, in this global uh, trade environment that we thrive in, that everybody plays by the same rules. That's purely our stance here. So as long as everybody plays by the same rules, we're more than happy to compete and win. In fact, competition makes us better. We love to compete. But you just, you've just, of course, taken the stake in that. You've just bought Embraer's business. Yep. You've now got a, you've really got a duopoly. I mean, and I don't say that in a pejorative sense, but I think you'd agree in aviation now, now Embraer's with you, Bombardier with Airbus, there is a straightforward duopoly for jet engine, for jet uh, planes. Yeah, in the commercial airplane world, for some time now, we've had roughly a 50-50 market share, heavy competition with Airbus. Let's without, look at, without we can question. look at the numbers on Airbus and we can actually see the, the production numbers uh, or the, yeah. the, the order numbers. You go backwards and forwards between the two. Yeah, if you, if you take a look at the order numbers, you can see that. Uh, the other thing I prefer to look at is, is delivery, airplane deliveries. I mean, that's really the base of the business. And you'll see that we've uh, out-delivered our competitor for the last uh, six years. And so we're playing into a, a strong marketplace right now. We've got the right product lineup. We're bringing more innovation to the market now than we ever have in the form of the, the MAX, the 787 Dreamliner, which you see here, the new 777X. And so while we're introducing new products, we're ramping up production. Was the 7478 beautiful plane, was it a mistake? I mean, it's a great, it's got, a, it's got a nice career as a freighter. You've got 24 orders for freighters, but it didn't, the, the very large aircraft seems to be not needed at the moment. For, for that ma market segment, it's the right airplane. It, it's by far the best airplane to operate in that outsized cargo market. And it's a great VIP aircraft for certain customers who need uh, that size of a VIP aircraft. So How many VIPs have bought it? Well, these, these are typical head of state, head of state kind of uh, vehicles, right. and it serves that need well. But th this is a, a market niche that is not a big growing market segment for us, but an important one. We see stronger market growth in narrow bodies and our mid-sized wide bodies, and that's again where we see a need for 43,000 new airplanes over the next 20 years. Well, on that point, finally, you are of the opinion that the industry has changed, airlines and aviation. Yeah. No longer cyclical, now it uh, becomes sustainable. Yeah. I suggest you're all fooling yourselves yeah. with respect. I think that you are as cyclical as ever, and it's just a matter of when. Yeah, I, I would counter that. I think the nature of the business has changed. And you're right, over its history, aerospace, commercial aerospace in particular, has been a cyclical business. But in its history, it has been dominated by American and, and European carriers. That's been the primary traffic hub. The large majority of our backlog has been focused in those regional areas. You don't think that you're selling, you don't, I mean, obviously you sell planes. You don't think that we're heading towards a glut of planes by airlines that have bought too many that eventually no. will put too much downward quite, pressure on prices. Quite, quite, quite the opposite. In fact, if we look at that next 20 years, 43,000 new airplanes for the world, about 40% of those are replacement, replacing existing fleets. 60% of it is because of the growth of the market. The nature of travel has changed. This Dreamliner, for example, almost 200 new city pairs have been created because of the technology. So global traffic is more networked. We have 100 million new passengers in Asia every year, and less, less than 20% of the world's population has even taken a single flight yet. It's one of the best growth markets in the world. Finally, when you look at these planes, I mean, you can tell me that you can give me every number you like. You can tell me how much it costs. Hopefully, I'm still going to get a good discount yeah. on one of them. We'll talk on the side. <laughs> By the way, pricing is the one thing that they'll never talk about. You can, they'd throw me over here before they mention discuss. But anyway, but more importantly, you give me every number that you like about profitability, cost, blah, blah. But when you look at it and you think of the people it'll fly and you think of its economics yeah. of any of these planes, what do you make of it? Tell me what it means. Well, this, this is a fantastic airplane. It's called the Dreamliner for a reason. And what this does for people, the way it enables safe travel around the world, comfortable travel, connecting city pairs in ways that have never been done before, it's connecting the world in new ways. This is an incredible product. And, and the revolution that it's creating in global network traffic is amazing. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having Thank us you. here. We're going to have a look at the plane later. You bet.
Thanks for right, visiting I, our factory. Thank you for having us. I was just going to get out of it. Right, as we continue, we talked about it. You heard us then discussing the battle for dominance in the skies, the rivalry between Boeing and Airbus after the break.